the Occam's razor. It's a single edge stainless steel razor and we're going to shave with it coming up next. <music> Hi, YouTubers and wet shavers everywhere. It's Mark with GeorgeTune.com. I'm back with another video. Great to see you again. Thanks so much for stopping by and sharing your time with me. We're going to have a shave with a brand new razor that came into the shaving den. This is the Occam's razor. This was suggested by viewer Rodney Ripplinger. Thank you very much, Rodney. Really do appreciate it. And other viewers in the past have asked me if I happen to have this particular razor. Well, it was on sale at Classic Shaving, according to Rodney, and the price point was right in the ballpark where I could say, yeah, I'm going to get this and give it a try. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be using and reviewing in this video today, the Occam's Razor. Uh, before we get to that, if this is your first visit to the channel, welcome, make yourself at home, check out all the other videos, and also please consider subscribing. I welcome your company and your comments. Well, getting back to what I was saying, viewer Rodney Ripplinger mentioned that these razors were on sale through Classic Shaving. I went up there, I selected this one in rose gold, and it arrived just a few days ago. We're going to have uh, our very first shave with it in this video. Now, this is a single edge stainless steel uh, razor. And uh, it looks like that's already set at about a 30 degree angle or so. And it comes with two other plates that vary the level of aggression. Now, uh, you can see right here on this pl plate right here, there are two dots right there. This is the medium aggression plate. It also comes with uh, a, uh, I guess you could say, a level one or a mild uh, aggression plate, which is this one right here with uh, one dot like that right there. And it also comes with a, a more aggressive uh, plate, which is uh, three dots, okay, right there. And these mount on top of the razor head. And you switch them out by simply uh, getting a little screwdriver and undoing these two screws right here. If you can see those two screws there, okay. And uh, these two screws right here. Ah, there they are. Okay, these two screws right here. All right. You undo those screws. You take off the plate. You put on another plate. That's how you change the level of aggression. Uh, seems to me that this is a razor that once you figure out which plate works best for you, you're not going to be swapping it off that often. Now, uh, there is an instructional video on how to hold this. And uh, one, one, the one video that they have suggested you hold it something like this, right here, like, like this, kind of pinched between your thumb and your second finger there, and your index finger here is guiding it from the back, something like this. And uh, I don't know. I'm, I don't know if I'm going to use it that way. I've seen other folks who have reviewed this, and they're using it like this, just holding it as you would a normal razor. We'll see. We'll see how it how it um, how it handles on that. But I will link to that video from Classic Shaving uh, to show you how they are handling it, positioning their hand with this razor. But it feels fine like this. Uh, I believe this is 2.2 ounces. I'll have to weigh it later. Uh, I, <laughs> I wanted to weigh it before the video, but I really am anxious to get to this shave. I got about a little over a day's worth of beard growth here. So we'll see what's going on. Now, there are several uh, blades that are compatible with this, and they give you a, a, a couple of cards that come with the razor to kind of outline what you're getting here in Occam's razor. They give you this card right here, and it has some information on it regarding the uh, razor. They also give you an explanation of the blade edge and the kind of blade it uses that the razor uses. And here are three uh, of the different kinds of blade types from Feather that are compatible with this razor. And they also give you a listing of the uh, uh, plate aggression levels, least and of course the uh, least moderate least, moderate, and of course this one is the most. And then uh, they give you blade recommendations for the uh, plate types that they have there, the aggression tape plate, uh, plate types. 
And as you can see right here, the ProGuard is the blade that is compatible with all three plate levels. And that's what we're using. We are going to be using the, uh, the Feather ProGuard uh, blades. I've already got a blade installed. So that's what we're using right here. Now, the installation of the blade, it installs from the back end of the razor right here. And the way you install it is you, uh, you just depress it down a little bit. You, they give you a tool. Let me show you the tool. They give you the tool here. It has a little lip on it right there. And that's how you can grab an opening on the back of the blade there. Okay, let me see if I can do it. And all you have to do is just pull down like that. And of course, that loosens the blade, and it uh, it comes out like that. Now, take note of these openings right here, here, and here. That becomes rather important in this. The way you load the blade is is uh, you can use the tool, but I found that it's a little bit easier for me to do it with my hand here. Here's the cutting edge here. Uh, you're just inserting it here like this, and then you're pressing down a little bit, and then you are just snapping it in place like that, okay? So how does that work? Well, if you look at these plates here, I'll show you with the, uh, the plates that are not attached to the razor. Uh, they have these two little tabs here. See those tabs there? Now this would be on top here like this. So what you're doing is, is you're inserting that blade and those little openings are you're just pushing down a little bit so it so the so the front end of the blade you know passes past these two little tabs and then when it pops back up then they catch on those tabs and that's how the blade is seated sort of from the top uh, they call it a floating razor blade uh, so that's how that works so uh, it stays in place and it's it's uh, very much uh, it's in place let me just make sure this is in place here yeah, that's, that seems to be, oh, you know what? It's just, here, doing it on camera is not, okay, doing it on camera is not, there it is. Okay, now I'm in place. I had to clip it in. <laughs> I had to make sure it hit that tab. I just went past the tab a little bit. But now it is in place, okay? And that's nice and secure in there. So that's how that works. Uh, now, there is an upgrade to this razor called the Orin. That's the Occam's Razor Enhanced Nano. That has a hollowed out handle. Uh, and the, uh, I, for lack of a better word, the safety bar here is cut back a little bit. Now, I've learned that uh, from a gentleman named Randy on his channel, Randy Shaves. I will link again to that video so you can see the comparison between those two razors. He uses this one and he also shows the Orin version. I don't have the Orin version. Uh, perhaps I'll get one down the road, but um, this is what I have right now, and we're going to shave with it. So that's kind of a brief explanation of what we have in the way of the Occam razor and how it's going to work and how it's going to shave. So I'm just going to clear the deck here a little bit. Hang on one minute. Let me get this over here like this. Set this over here like this. And I am also going to show you the soap that I'm going to be using. Obviously, I'm going to kick it off again with the uh, Cube 2.0. And uh, we're going to be using Future Fiction. This is the shave soap that started it all. Uh, this is an app. This was the very first Phoenix shaving shave soap that I used. And I absolutely fell in love with the scent and the performance of CK6. Well, I'm also using CK6 for this one, and I just love that artwork. I mean, it just made, being a cartoonist, it just made an immediate connection, it made an immediate connection with me. Uh, we're also going to be finishing it off with uh, my Allen block from Phoenix Shaving with the no slip grip and the dry dock system. And of course, we're going to be using the Future Fiction um, aftershave and cologne and also uh that's john from wait a minute here it is <laughs> i've got a bunch of them here future fiction aftershave balm yeah we're going to be using that for upstairs okay john from which is also another great scent that's out here too use that uh, the other day all right so you know what uh, i think we have everything here all set and ready to go so what we'll do is we'll uh 
we'll just take this hot water that's on top of the puck here. I also have my brush scuttle all set to go. Oh, I'm using my Star Wisp shaving brush from Phoenix Shaving to whip up the lather. Looking forward to shaving with this razor. This is the Maiden Voyage, first time out. It came with the, uh, the, uh, the number two plate, the moderate plate, the medium plate. Um, a moderate plate. Is that what they call it? You know what? Let me just take a look. Make sure I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not confusing the uh, the terms here. This would be the uh, yeah, the moderate plate. They got least, moderate, most. So okay, we're at least, moderate, most. Okay, so I'm <laughs> I'm using the moderate plate that came already installed. So I'm thinking. Most of the reviews I've seen use the moderate plate, so that's what we're going to use. Hang on, let me set that down. Let me put this over here again. Get it out of the way so it's not going to get splashed up. All right, you know what? Let's wet the face. Let's get to the shade. Okay, boy, I'm looking forward to shaving with this. Ever since it arrived, I've been looking at it, and... The blade installs very easily, but you do have to understand how it's done. There is a video from Classic Shaving where they explain how to do it. And my ex explanation is based on what I saw in their video. And truth be told, it took me about four or five times to really get it down. But once you understand the process and how those tabs work on the underside of the top plate, once you understand that, then it's very easy to do. And the tool does come in handy for removal, but not so much for installing, at least for me. All right, let's rinse this. Okay, let's put a little more on there. Okay, we're going to work that in. There'll be a nice pre-shave base to lather on top of. And give some added slickness. It's already degreased my skin and uh, beard. So here we go with Future Fiction. I'm going to put a little more water on that brush. Just the dip, okay? And again, you don't have to load future, future Fiction a lot. Just a few swirls and you're good to go. That's all I'm going to need right there, folks. Oh, that's nice and warm, too. Boy, that's nice and warm. I love this scent. With spring and summer coming up, perfect, perfect scent. And this brush fits so nicely in the hand, too. The knot is great has a beautiful feel to it. I mean, look how quickly, huh? Look how quickly we're building the lather there. I mean, absolutely wonderful. It does, it explodes, you know. Mantic 59, I give him credit for this all the time because I read his review uh, before I even tried it. It really intrigued me. And uh, he said that the lather just explodes off the brush, and he is correct because boom, lather. Look at that. That is outstanding. Wow. Just gonna get a little more water there and just put a little more on there. We're we're all set to go. All right. Plenty of soap and lather on the knot. I got a I got a towel here to uh, wipe off my hands. We're gonna go ahead and use this and handle it. I'm going to heat this under some hot, hot, hot water, and I'm going to handle it just like any other razor. I'm not going to try their method just yet. I don't feel real confident to kind of use that, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. I'm going to just get rid of a little bit of excess water in the sink here while I'm warming my blade up. Oh, yeah, that's good. That's got it. All right, I believe it's going to be at a 30-degree angle. At least that's my guess. If I'm wrong, well, I apologize. But uh, it's I, I'm, I want it to be 30 degrees because I want to say 30 degrees, a light touch. Let the razor do all the work, gentlemen.
That's really nice and smooth. That is very, very smooth. And it's a feather blade, too. And boy, it rinses cleanly. Look at that. There, I mean, it's just open, so there's no real areas to hide for a lather to hide. And there is this wider, wider cutting path. When you compare this with a regular DE razor, this is much, much wider. Okay. All right, here we go. I'm going to try to handle this razor. Okay, I'm just trying to handle it. Okay, like, okay, like this. Here we go, like this. Yeah, I'm kind of handling it like this. That's really not the way, but uh, it's right now it seems to work for me. Also holding it like this now, kind of getting it on the, the wider, flatter edge here. All right. That's pretty nice. That does a real nice job of getting up underneath the nostrils. Probably one of the better razors to get up underneath there. That's pretty neat. And you would think the way it's angled and the size there, it wouldn't, but it does. And I can imagine that the newer version where this, this front edge here, the safety bar, is cut back a little bit. It's even better, a little more maneuverable for the, for the tight areas. All right, first pass done. Let's rinse. You know, I'm right there at a socially acceptable shave level, par for the course with this, like I am a lot of other razors. Uh, not bad at all. It's nothing uh, that uh, puts it at the head of the class after first pass. It's right there on par with a lot of other uh, razors. But then again, uh, I think part of the uh, reason for that possibly is uh, my actual handling of the razor, uh, trying to... Um, figure out the proper grasp that works for me. Uh, I think their suggested grasp of the razor might be the way to go. Uh, we'll see. Um, okay. Let me wipe my hands off here just so it doesn't slip out of my hand. All right. Okay. All right, I'm going to try it. No, I can't. I'm not going to do it like that. I'm going to go. I'm just going to hold it like I normally would any other razor. And I'm going to go east to west across the grain. Uh, like this, maybe. Now, holding it like that seems to work for me that way. Uh, I can understand now holding it like this, this way. That seems to be rather comfortable. Yeah, that's that seems to really really cut the whisker. Seems to really get up there nicely.
seems that the uh, the corners here, these outer corners here, they extend. They're a little wider than the actual blade, so they seem to be getting in the way of doing the east to west pass. See that? I don't know if you can see that. Here, I'll show you. See how that's... So that's uh, something I have to watch out for. With the grain seems to seems to be fine. Uh, across the grain, yeah, because because this extends wider than the actual blade blade deck, let's say. Uh, then that they, it tends to get in the way of uh, the east to west underneath the nostril there a little bit. At least that's been my first experience. All right, second pass done. Let's rinse. It's a nice shade. I'm going to need a third pass only because I'm having a hard time handling this razor. Um, it's, it's a bit foreign to me because it's not a rounded uh, handle and uh, it's, uh, it's just different. But I also want to see how it handles on the against the grain, against the grain pass. And uh, I'm sure that if I work with the razor, uh, on uh, additional shades that uh, handling it will become second nature. It's just that maybe I'm overthinking it a little bit and just not, you know, maybe I should just be grabbing and shaving with it and not really thinking about about it and it would come more naturally. But I think I'm thinking about it too much <clears throat> in order to demonstrate the proper grasp for you for this video. Nice warm lather, by the way. So um, I'm sure that this... Uh, Third pass is going to be a little bit easier to handle uh, just because of uh, the way I'm going to handle it for uh, um, just because it seems that, that I'm able to get my finger right here, right there on that area to really take advantage of that width there. And uh, well, we'll see. And then maybe get my thumb back there behind it. Well, we'll see. We'll see how we'll see how it goes. OK, so we're going to go with path number three. We're going to go against the grain south and north. Not bad at all. Yeah, I mean, I just want to show you that this whole channel is filled with lather there. It gets out of the way, and the blade still has plenty of exposure to keep cutting. You see that? Okay, and watch. One, two, and it rinses very, very cleanly. See if I get plenty of slickness there to take care of some of those areas. All right, third pass done. Let's rinse. It's a nice shave. That's a nice. That's a really nice shave. And you know, I needed that third pass. I really did. This was really nice and mild and efficient. We'll talk about it more. Let's just do my two final rinses. Really, it gave me a nice, it gave me a really smooth, wonderful shave. All right, here's my uh, two final rinses. One warm, one cold. Here's my warm water rinse. Let me get to the cold water side. This is really nice. I love the scent of Future Fiction and I love the performance of CK6. 
absolutely fantastic. You saw how few swirls I needed, and it just made a lather like that. All right, here's my cold water rinse. Oh man, very, very nice shave. Clean, fresh towel waiting for me right here. Boy, that's that's a that's a nice shave. That's a real that is an exceptionally exceptionally smooth shave. I'm not kidding you. That is marvelous. That really is. That really does provide you with a wonderful wonderful shave. I don't think I'm going to have to go to the higher level plate or the lower level plate. I think the Pro Guard blade with this razor is perfect, absolutely perfect. Let's get the Allen block, run under some cold water and see what kind of feedback we get. See what kind of feedback we get. Any stinging, any zinging, that sort of thing. Really a very, very smooth, enjoyable shave. Really very, very good. All right, here we go. Oh, that's smooth. No stinging, no zinging at all. Man, is that good. Just some bracing from the Allen block. Maybe one little zing there. Maybe, maybe. Boy, that's nice. Dry dock. Allen block goes in there like that. Air in the room does the rest. You know what? This thing is... I'm. This thing has lasted and lasted and lasted. I've gotten so many shaves on camera and off camera. I've used it on camera and off camera. And I've gotten so many shaves with it. And you can see it's really getting thin. The uh, no slip grip is uh, kind of hanging on there. Uh, <laughs> pretty soon the no slip grip is going to be wider than the actual Allen block. But man, I've gotten, man, I've got this. The life of this has been great. That's probably one of the better values and album blocks um, out there. It's from Phoenix Shaving. Really, really terrific. All right, let's take a look at the uh, the brush here just to show you. Look at that. Look how much I have I get. Look how much I have. I have enough for a fourth pass and a touch-up, it looks like. And look at this. Look at this. Ah, CK6. I absolutely love this shave soap. And this scent of Future Fiction is awesome. You're looking for a nice spring, summertime scent. Future Fiction, that, it's just, it's fantastic. I, like I say, that's, it's the first shaving soap uh, from Phoenix Shaving that I ever tried. And uh, I was absolutely blown away by the performance and absolutely love the scent. And of course, you know, the artwork, the Flash Gordon, Buck Rogers, Star Wars, Fleischer Superman comics come to mind. Uh, the Fleischer uh, Studios, uh, the Superman animated cartoons they made back in the 19th. If you haven't seen those, uh, Google that on YouTube. Say Fleischer Superman and watch those come up. They are just phenomenal. Produced in the 1940s. Really, really cutting edge, uh, high level technology and animation. Just amazing, amazing stuff. But this, this reminds me of that. And I, I was, I saw that. I was immediately, immediately attracted to it. All right. So here we go with the after shave and the cologne. All right. Okay, ooh, man, that's, that's good. Oh, that's wonderful. Love the scent. Absolutely love the scent. And for upstairs, a little bit of the Star Jelly, their aftershave balm. About that much is all I'm going to need, like that. Haven't used this in a while. I'm so glad I pulled it out. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. Great shave. Really, really smooth, close, comfortable shave. I am really, really impressed by this razor. Uh, easy to load the blade. Easy to get, you know, to, to load it in. 
Take, put it in, take it out. Really, very, 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 very easy to do that. Uh, rinses cleanly in between shaving swaths. Really nice. Nice weight. Uh, handles, handles fine. It's just that I am still trying to get used to figuring out how to hold it best during my shave. I fumbled with it a little bit. But the third pass really paid off. It gave me an exceptional shave. Now, again, uh, when I first started using it, I'm grabbing it on the narrow sides here. And that's really not that great of a way to, uh, to handle it. When the, on this side here, I'm holding it like this. And I think if I hold it more like this with my, the back of my hand on there, that with my thumb and my finger kind of guiding it, this way, I think that'll probably be better. Uh, I'm beginning to think that the way they suggested to hold it like this, uh, this is probably the way to go uh, all the way. And then also you can just change to this side here. So that might be the way to go. Now, I was doing it this way here. And then when I got to this side here, it was more or less kind of holding it like this with my fingers wrapped around it. Uh, the east to west, um, I'm starting again, this is kind of fumbling with it a little bit here with my uh, thumb behind it. Uh, I, again, I think if I'm using the, uh, the finger method that they, uh, that they talk about and use it this way here, I don't know if you can see that, this way here like this, uh, holding it something like that, I think that improves the east to west pass. And of course, the uh, south to north pass um, this will just, just like this, holding my finger like this and just, you know, get, as long as I can position my fingers to where I'm taking advantage of this wider flat area here, I'm okay. Uh, it's, uh, grasping the, the razor is a little bit foreign to me, so I'm going to have to have a few other shaves with it to really see how my hand naturally conforms to the handle. And again, I think I was overthinking it a little bit. And I think just grabbing it and shaving with it, it'll be fine. Uh, gave me an amazingly close, comfortable shave. Really, I'm on my way to BBS after three passes. And I think this is probably the blade you want to get with it, the ProGuard. Um, there are other blades out there, and I do have other blades. I do have the, um, uh, let me see what I have here. Uh, where is that card? I do have the... Uh, the uh, Super Professional, the Professional Super Blades, this second one listed right here. I have those. I bought those with the razor, not knowing uh, which razor I should, uh, which blade I should get. But the Super Professional Blade is only recommended for um, Super Professional Blade. Uh, the Professional Super Blade is recommended for the um, the one dot and the two dot levels, the first plate level, the second plate level. This one and the one below it, uh, but it's not recommended for the uh, third plate. Uh, the Pro Guard is recommended for all three plate levels. That's why I ordered them from Amazon and they came, they arrived the very next day. So they arrived in time for me to do this review with them. Very, very glad I got those because I think that is probably the blade that fits best for this razor, depending, I mean, it doesn't matter which uh, plate level you're going to use, the Pro Guard, as you can see there on the bottom, is going to fit that plate level. It's going to be compatible with it. It's going to give you a good shave. I don't think I have to go up a level uh, at all or down a level. This is sitting very, very well for me right there. Really, really terrific. I like the weight. I like the way that it handles. Uh, as far as um, well, I like the weight, and I like the way the weight handles. Let me put it to you that way. I'm still getting used to actually using this and understanding it. Now that I'm talking to you, this starts this this grasp here is starting to feel quite natural, like this. And uh, yeah, and I think that's probably I think we're probably on a 30 degree angle there. I'm not sure. If anybody knows, correct me on that. But uh, it also gave me the opportunity to say 30 degrees of light touch. Let the razor do all the work, gentlemen. And that's what happened here. The razor did all the work. Nice weight. Um, I'm going to have to learn how to handle it a little bit a little bit better because you can see how thin this handle is here and then how wide it is there. 
and uh, really a different kind of a design to a razor. Very, very unique, and I don't think you can compare this razor to many others on the market because it is so distinct. It's its, its own animal, so to speak. So, but you really should experience this razor. I will have a link to Classic Shavings page, and hopefully they will have some of these left. I got this in rose gold. There was uh, one in uh, just a um, regular silver um, stainless finish uh, that was $99. And then they had one in gold, which was $69 as well. But the rose gold, I thought, was probably uh, one of the nicer finishes. Hopefully they have some of these left by the time this video airs. And if they have any of the Orin, the uh, Occam Razor Enhanced Nano versions, which is the newer version than this, uh, I might, if the price point is right and the availability is there, I might get one of those as well so I can compare both of them. But this was really, really terrific. The uh, Occam's Razor. My thanks to Rodney Ripplinger. Also, my thanks to Randy Shaves for uh, doing a comparison video. Uh, I learned a lot from that. Thanks to the folks at Classic Shaving for your videos, which detailed this. So I was able to gather up that information and also uh, talk about that information in this video review. Also, Don Youngner of What the Face uses uh, an Occam razor. I believe he has the Orin. Uh, he likes it. He uses it. Um, I'll also link to his video so you can see how he uses the razor and uh, how much he likes it. Uh, all of those videos, very, very, very good. Very, very, uh, has, has, has some very, very good instruction on all that. So that's it, the Occam's Razor. I'll have the links below. All right, that's it. Thanks very much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. Please share, please subscribe, please like. Hit that bell so it will give you a yell the next time I upload a video. Comment below, let me know. Check out the Executive Shaving Company. Use the code MARK5. Check out my blog, georgetoon.com slash blog. For my comics from George, other cartoons, other videos like this, I'm on Facebook. Check out my Facebook page. Check out Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements for some great, great shaving gear, future fiction, my gosh, wonderful scent, CK6, great performance. Check out VikingsBlade.com for some great shaving gear. Hey, for all things Barbas, check out the Big Dude Barbas. I'll have the link below. Check out my Amazon product page at Amazon.com slash shop slash Mark Zerini, where you'll find all the products I review in this channel, organized and categorized so you can find everything in a stamp very easily. Thanks very much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. I'll see you again real soon.